Tea? Mm. Toast? Mm. Is that mm, yes or mm, no? What was that? Oh, my God, it's a complete stranger. What? I haven't seen you all week, darling. You came home last night after I'd gone to bed. I come down this morning and you're hidden behind your paper. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry. I was rather hoping we could make some plans to do something this weekend. Michael? Mm, absolutely. Is that mm, absolutely yes or mm, absolutely no? Yes, yes, whatever you want to do. The only thing is I've got to be in the house tomorrow. Oh, well, I mean, there's, there's plenty we can do here. No, the House of Commons, where I work. Oh, I see. What time do you have to get back, then, to town? I really ought to leave late this afternoon. Hardly worth your while coming, was it? Well, you can't take a chance on the M1. Sometimes it can get completely chocker. I mean, frankly, it's a hell of a slog between London and the Cotswolds. Well, you wanted to live here. I'm an MP. I can't just live anywhere. Yes, but your constituency is in Birmingham. But nobody could expect me to actually live there, could they? This place is perfectly handy for me to get to Birmingham without the danger of Birmingham getting to me. Besides, you like it here. Well, I used to like it here. Fact is, I, uh, I get rather lonely here. Oh, yes. Well, yes. I, mean, I, I knew that being an MP's wife wasn't going to be terribly glamorous, but I didn't expect to be stuck in the middle of nowhere doing my good works in the morning and throwing my pots to Gloria Honeyford in the afternoon. Michael, could you tear yourself away from the paper just for a moment? Look, God knows I'd like to get down here more often. I'd love to spend more time doing more of those good, healthy country things like shooting, fishing, fishing hunting. hunting. Yes, I know, you listed them as your hobbies in Who's Who. You're not really going to catch an awful lot of fish, darling, if you're only down here for an hour a week. Unless, of course, you catch them from the freezer centre. Well, what sort of things do you have in mind for today? Well, I, uh, I thought perhaps we could pop down to Stratford. Yes, OK. It only takes about ten minutes to get there, doesn't it? Well, I had thought about walking. Walking? Yes, you like walking. What on earth gave you that idea? Well, it's in your entry for Who's Who, just after hunting. Oh, yes. Yes, walking with the dogs. Listen, in the first place, I haven't got time for walking. And in the, the second, we haven't got any dogs, haven't we? I know it's terrible, but everyone does it. Uh, Charlie Davis put down jogging and mountain climbing, and he takes a taxi from his house to his garage. Anyway, I'm here, and what time I have got is all at your disposal. Great. No plans? No. No plans at all? Nope. Great. Oh, I believe a man from the Observer is coming here to do an article on me. Today? Yes. One of their room of my own pieces. I'm expecting him in about an hour. Well, Michael, you might have told me. I just did. Right. Which room's going to be your own, then? My study, of course. Oh, your study? Yes. Well, you haven't been in your study for over a year. Yes, well, we'll just open the windows, dust a bit. Sorry, we'll what a bit? Dust. Oh, we are going to dust, are we? No, well, obviously you'll dust. Obviously. You do it properly. Point of my doing it. I do it so badly, wouldn't I? Yes. I'll just potter about and arrange things. Ah, oh, well, you, uh, you may have to do quite a bit of that. What do you mean? Um... I've been using it to store a few things. There's a bicycle in there? Yes. Why a bicycle? Well, it's handy for the shops and... and... Oh, God, it's a laundry. Oh, well, I've been using it as a bit of a utility room. I can't be photographed in here. There aren't even any cares. Well, I, I, I took them out. Well, you could sit on the bicycle. Look like one of those old sepia shops. No, oh, just the right image for the coming man of the 90s. Let me help you with that. It's all right, I've done it. Right, now, books. The biography of Winston Churchill and Hobbes Leviathan, to show I take my politics seriously. And the complete Yes Minister virus, to show I don't take it too seriously. How about a couple of Geoffrey Archers? Yeah, don't be ridiculous. Now, where's my pipe? Oh, it's in the drawer, isn't it? You no, know, that's full of seed packets. Oh. oh. Oh, my God. Have you been using it as a trowel? No, no, a, a dibber. Sorry. Never mind. I'll get the fire going anyway. Where's the matches? Oh, you don't need matches. You may have learned how... No, I mean, you don't fire. need matches. There's a switch. My God, it's a fake fire. How long has this been here? I put it in about a month ago. Why? 
Well, you've only lit the real one at Christmas time, and then you complain about the smoke coming back into the room and said that that's what you came to the country to get away from. I told the man from the Observer I had a log fire in here. Well, you have. I haven't. Yes, you have. It's a gas log fire. Turn it off and put a plant in front of it. Hope the pot's tasteful enough for you. I'm sorry. I don't give a stuff what they think about my taste. Excuse me a second. I've just given your terracotta nymph a quick swimming lesson in the pond. You can fish her out when they've gone. Right, I'd better get dressed. Well, you are dressed. No, properly dressed. I can't wear this. Where's my old brown jumper, the one with the holes in it? Oh, had the holes in it. I sewed them up. Oh, marvellous. The one thing I wanted left the same, and you mended it. Sorry. God, they're here early. I'll have to stay as I am. What are you doing? I was just checking your pockets for loose change. Sorry, I'm afraid I'd find some condoms in there or something. This country's got a condom fixation. Coming! Good morning. Good God. Nicholas. Jim. Jim. How are <laughs> you? Bye. Hello. Hello. This hello. is Jim Nicholas. Nicholas, hello. Nichols. Jim and I were at school together. Oh. Jim was a real star. Oh. Played Hamlet in the school play. Really? What did you play? Oh, nothing. I just carried the spear and typed the program. It came out twice the size of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, come through. I thought we'd use my study. Right. Very nice. Oh, this is Andy McKenzie. A terribly rude of me. How do you do? I've seen a lot of your stuff. I hope we can get a shot as good as the one you did of Colin Moynihan. Looks very imposing. Yeah. <laughs> I stood him on a box. You'll have to watch Andy. Don't sit down, though. Please. Thanks. So, how have you been? Oh, fine. Scraping a living, you know. Couple of kids. Oh, great. You? No, we didn't find time, did we? Uh, not so far, no. <laughs> Helen's always said looking after me was like having a giant baby anyway. In fact, she's the one you should really be talking to. The real brains of the organisation. I'm afraid she's rather wasted here. She'd be the MP if I wasn't so hopeless at looking after the house, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Actually, I'm not terribly interested in politics. Perhaps you'd like to get some coffee, darling. Oh, right. For one of my few remaining vices, I'm afraid. Good coffee. Ah. Well, here we are. An old thing, but my own, as they say. My study I'm referring to, of course, not my wife. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Full of the old familiar objects, you know. Everything in its place. Quite. Anyway, I'm sure you two would like something to go with the old coffee. Scotch. Oh, right. Thanks very much. Um, excuse me a second. Darling, where has the drinks cupboard gone? The drinks... Ah, yes, I was using it for the wellies, wasn't I? It's under the bookcase. Naturally, thank you. This is instant coffee. I wanted real coffee. Oh, it is real. It's instant. Oh, it says, look, freeze-dried from South American beans. I don't care if it was hair-dried from West Indian coconuts. It's still instant. It's all right. I've just told them that my only vice was a good cup of coffee. Well, can't you tell them that you've conquered it? We have still got the percolator, I suppose. Or have you been using it to grow tomatoes? No, we have still got the percolator. Great. I'm sorry to make such a fuss. Do you know what a terrible snob I am? Here we go. Don't bother with the old decanter nonsense. Just straight out of the bottle for me. Right. It's a triple malt, isn't it? Yes. I believe you're right. <laughs> this map here is quite interesting. It shows the village where I was born, in uh, Kibbleworth. Quite an ordinary, almost poor background, really. This is a 17th century print of the area that cost me 500 pounds. You might want to get that in. I dare say you saw that cartoon of me that appeared in your paper when I first became a junior minister. Don't think I remember it. A rather a vicious attack, I thought, actually. Really? It portrayed me as Dracula biting the neck of a small child. Anyway, I was delighted to be able to buy the original. You could get that in the shot as well. Uh, coffee. Thank you. Thank you. It's cold. 
Oh, sorry, it took me a little time to put out the biscuits. I mean, it's stone cold. Oh, my God, I forgot to boil the kettle. <laughs> Nice weather for a bonfire. Yes. Sorry about the uh, coffee. What? Oh, that's all right. I've never fussed about coffee anyway. Nice bonfire. Yes. Is there something I could burn for you? What? Oh, no. No. Um, tell me, are those friends of yours? No, I've never seen them before. Oh, no. They seem to be friends of yours. What? No, no, I... I don't think so. Look, I think we ought to get back inside. Why? Oh, no reason. I wonder if you'd mind taking me from this side. Doesn't seem to be any difference to me, but Helen says there is, so we might as well indulge her. I'm so sorry to barge in like this. It's just uh, some people have turned up who aren't friends of Jim's and, you know. I don't know them. Well, I did know them. I used to work with them when I was on a less reputable paper. You mean to say the Sunday Times got to hear about your article? <laughs> Frightfully funny. No, they're from the news of the world, and unless I'm very much mistaken, they're here to ask you about something else entirely. What? Oh, just some rumours. What rumours? About your bit on the... Something that's been rumoured about a bit. That's all. Well, what is it? Tell me. I believe they want to ask you if it's true you've been spending naughty nights on a bit of extra nuptial nookie, Minister. <laughs> You're not smiling, darling. Well, have they gone? No. Oh, hang on. They're walking back to the van. Thank God for that. So they are going? Uh, no. They're unloading some lighting. Oh, and two more cars have just turned up. Look, I know a lot of people in the media. Some of them owe me a favour. I'll have a friendly word with them. Is John Cole out there? Uh, no, but I can see the guy who did the Elton John story for The Sun. Oh, God, they're going to make up a lot of stories about me and rent men. This is outrageous. Irresponsible hounding by the media of people of high standing like me. You think it's not true? That's got nothing to do with it. Ah, so it is true. There are always some people who are prepared to spread innuendo about men of importance. You haven't told Jim whether it's true or not, darling. Well, obviously it's not true. Well, why obviously? Well, when have I ever lied to you? Well, the first time was on our first date, when I was consoling you for the death of your first wife and she walked in the restaurant. Uh, and yes, all right. I wonder if you'd uh, excuse us. Oh, absolutely. You carry on. This is preposterous. Trapped in our own house because of some untruthful, malicious gossip. Our press are a disgrace. Look, this has absolutely nothing to do with me. You come here, chatting away about how we were old pals together at school, guzzle down our best whiskey and then stab us in the back. You've all been competing on the dung heap to see who can drag up the juiciest scandal. Ever since Profumo. Well, not that, of course, you were wrong about Profumo, but I mean... Well, you know what I mean. I mean, you're looking for scandal where it doesn't exist. Take Cecil. No, all right, not that you were wrong about Cecil. But now you've obviously paid someone a ludicrous amount of money to tell you what you want to hear. And you're going to look pretty sick when it turns out that she's made the whole thing up. Because let me tell you now, that whoever this woman is, I have never met her and I don't even know her name. Philippa Gilbert. Jim, I'm terribly sorry to have ranted on at you. I wonder if you and Andy would do me a big favour and go out and tell them I'll give them a statement in due course. Absolutely. Take the bottle with you. And Jim, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention it. You know I'm sure you understand. Discretionary. Hello. Hello, Minister. I'm sorry, darling. You were saying... Philippa Gilbert. Who's Philippa Gilbert? Well, you know, that's what I thought. Because, you know, we get an itemised phone bill. And I was curious about the number of calls made to this uh, Philippa Gilbert. And so I thought there must be some mistake. So I rang her. And what did she say, whoever she is? Nothing. Her answer phone was on. Yes, yes, well, I'm disappointed in you. Because had you bothered to ask me, I could have told you that Philippa Gilbert is in fact a parliamentary librarian of mature years, who is working with me on the water privatisation bill. Oh, I see. Yes. So it's another Philippa Gilbert who sent you the letter. Letter? Yes. God, Helen, you know, I get hundreds of letters from all sorts of crackpots. I usually just chuck them away. 
Well, you left this one on the dressing table. Yes. That particular letter was sent to me by mistake, and I left it on the dressing table to forward back to the post office, who, frankly, are simply not doing their job properly these days, which is something I intend to look into. Look, 15 years of happy marriage. You can throw that away because I made one mistake. Well, according to this letter, you made the same mistake once or twice every Friday afternoon for a year and a half. Obviously, she's exaggerated the whole thing. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Good. I mean, right now, I'm recalling how you softly but firmly caressed me. When did you learn how to caress? And no mention of squashing. I mean, had it said, right now, I'm recalling how you softly but firmly squashed me, well, then that, to me, might have been more believable. Go away! Oh. I have nothing to say to you. Look, you must understand, this has nothing to do with us. Well, it seems to me it has rather a lot to do with us. I mean, who else does it have to do with? Postman Pat, Benazir Bhutto. I mean, it wasn't important. Maybe. I was trying to protect you. Well, it's a funny way of doing it. Protecting me by lying on top of a 60-year-old librarian. Oh, uh, no, all right. She's not a 60-year-old librarian. Just as well, because the way she describes your afternoons on a Friday, she could easily have pigged out on you at that age. Uh, all right, Helen. I mean, I you haven't done any everything. walking, all this horizontal Look, I said jogging it wasn't all of a sudden. There's no need to be vulgar. You could have had a car. All right, rest. it was important because, in a strange way, it was keeping us together. Do you see? I'm sorry, no. I mean, uh, instead of sleeping with me, you're sleeping with this bonking bibliophile. But how was that keeping us together? Because it was something that wasn't important, it helped keep our marriage going by being a harmless outlet for... Oh, for your uncontrollable sexual desires, which no one woman could ever satisfy, particularly this one. I mean, I, I, am I not attractive enough? Is that it? Well, it's nothing to do with your not being attractive. You are attractive, very. What if I were to have an affair? Well, you wouldn't. Why not? Well, because women aren't driven to it. Well, certainly not by chauffeur-driven limousines every Friday afternoon. No, please, please don't touch me. You see, the thing is... Ever since I read of that letter, I've been trying to decide what I want to do. Uh, look, Helen, I said I'm sorry. No, you haven't actually. Well, it goes without saying. Well, it certainly does in your case. Excuse me. No, I'd rather hope you might start with I'm sorry, instead of which we've had outrage cries of it's completely untrue, followed by cries of oh yes, now I remember it is true, but it wasn't important because in some way it was keeping us together, in which case it is important, but not apparently important enough to say I'm sorry. I mean, I don't have any sexual drive, do I? <laughs> Look, we've got to go out there and face them. We? Yes, if we go out and tell them it's not true, it'll probably all blow over. But it is true. Yes, but the press don't know that. But I know that. I can't just go out there and give them a bare-faced lie. I'm not a government minister. It's the word of a highly respected politician against that of a girl in the library department. Who are the public going to believe? A girl in the library department every time. Not with you beside me, showing your faith in me, standing by me. Go away! Look, I've just got my first ministerial post. I'm in increasing demand on discussion programs. Spitting image, you've just made a puppet of me. I'm asking you to stand by me now, and, well, we can go back to how things were before. I don't want to go back to how things were before. I mean better than before. We can spend more time together, go out for intimate meals like we used to. Our last intimate meal was very intimate. Candles, violins, the only thing missing was you. I'm sorry, I said it was a late night sitting. How am I to know it wasn't a late night lying down on top of a librarian? Helen, it's all over, but... Well, I wanted to be here with you. With you? Well, what about Felicity Kendall? I have never had any sort of relationship. No, she had a baby when she was over 40. Helen, listen, you've always said that looking after me was like having a giant baby. No, I haven't always said that, actually. You've always said that I've said it. You knew damn well I wanted a baby, a real baby, one that's slightly more grown up than you are. All right, we'll have a baby. Happy? No. No? No, I'm not sure I want your baby now. Helen, for God's sake, I've just said you can have one. Oh, thank you. I just can't win, can I? Leave us alone! When we married, we said it was for better or worse. Well, this is the worse. I've got to go outside and face those people baying for my blood, and I need you there as a... An alibi. I may have been a complete fool, but I'm also a fighter. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to let you give up on this marriage. Me? If you're not going to stay with me, I might as well go out there, tell them the facts and let them tear me apart. That's blackmail. Helen, tell me you don't love me. I... That's the only question. 
Because if you love me, you've got to face this together. We can't keep living in the past. What's done is done, and we've now got to look forward. Forward to, well, the future. This is a beginning, not an end. I love you. If you love me, you've got to help me. Helen, please. I better go and get dressed. Can't have the world's press thinking I'd have to come back from digging over the compost heap. I said to her, Linda, I said, you see over there, that's the Archbishop of Canterbury. I'll give you 50 quid if you'll take your top off and fling your arms around. Gentlemen, gentlemen, and ladies, I would like to make a short statement. I believe there have been certain rumours circulating concerning my marital affairs. I have come out here to tell you the facts. I'm prepared to stand up proudly and say I have nothing be ashamed of it. I'd like to say that my wife and I are as happy and secure a couple as we have ever been. But we both regard these rumors with complete and justifiable contempt. And I'm sure my wife would like to add some words of her own. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, my husband has been the uh, subject... Uh, could you speak up a little, please, Mrs. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> my husband has been the subject... Oh, excuse me, you're standing on my fox club. Oh. Could you move? Sorry. Um, of some... Um, wild rumours uh, concerning an alleged affair with another woman. And we've talked about those rumours, haven't we, darling, as we talk about most things. And uh, it seems that I have to make a statement in order to clear up any further misunderstandings. So I would just like to state that, to my certain knowledge, these rumours are completely and utterly true. And at no oh, time... Sorry, did you say true, Mrs. Coates? Uh, yes, yes, I did, didn't I? <laughs> Oh, yes, my husband has been having a sexual liaison for some time now with a parliamentary librarian named of Philippa Gilbert. That's Philippa with two L's, by the way. And uh, with lots of other people, as far as I know. I expect you'll ferret that out for yourselves, though, won't you? And so, consequently, I have decided to divorce my husband before it's too late for me to start a family with someone else. I expect to be very well looked after in the divorce settlement, but... Just in case, I have this intimate letter from Miss Gilbert to my husband, which I'm prepared to auction to the highest bidder. Now, do I hear 10,000? Do I hear 10,000? 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. 